Here we have the monitor logger menu of the Goose controller. We can see one, two, four, or eight channels. We can also look at the OBD2 data and also the data logger when you're setting up Boost Control. In the data monitoring windows, you can choose what channel to display. For example, here we have Boost and KPA. And you can change that to PSI. Hold down the center button, go down to PSI, hold down the center button again, and now you're in PSI. And you can do the same for the rest of the windows. Menu 2 is Setup Boost. This is where you choose between open loop and closed loop boost control. We're going to go over details of that in another video. Menu 4 is Setup Control. Here is where you can turn on your closed loop boost control, then also change your boost depending on RPM, gear, speed, throttle, or air temperature. Menu 5, Setup Inputs. Here you can set up, calibrate, activate, and deactivate your inputs to the boost controller. Now if you're using the OBD2 interface, you're going to get most of your data through that. But in case you don't, uh, you can do a manual RPM input setup, vehicle speed sensor input setup, um, and also you can do gear detection. So if you're doing a boost based on gear, you can learn uh, all the gear ratios and uh, set that up. Here we can configure the analog inputs into the unit. Uh, for example, you can do a temp sensor and one of many widebands that are available on the market. And you can also do a fuel pressure sensor. So what it will do is look at your boost versus your fuel pressure. And if fuel pressure is dropping, it can limit uh, boost and trigger warning light. Here we have the exhaust temperature setup. You can activate it and also set up your warning light and boost limit. Here you can do the OB2 CAN bus setup, so you can turn on or off each of the channels available to you through the CAN network. Menu 6 is setting up outputs. Here you choose what type of solenoid you have. If you're using the Plex boost control solenoid, you choose 20 Hz. If you're using something else, you have to choose the appropriate frequency to use. Here you can choose to turn on or off your boost limit warning, and also set uh, how far below the limit the warning light turns on. Here you can set up an analog output, and here a shift light. You can turn it on or off, and then tell it when to turn on, and the LED brightness. In this part of the menu, you set up your lambda limits. So if the lambda goes too lean, the boost controller will actually cut boost. Setting up OB2 limits. You can choose to run base boost, if your engine coolant temperature is below a certain level when the engine's cold, or you can choose to limit boost if the engine temperature gets too hot. And you can do the same for your air temperature, long-term fuel trims, or fuel pressures. Menu 7 is statistics. You'll find information about the unit, the hardware, firmware version, your serial number, and what features you have enabled, uh, EGT and OBD2. On the statistics page, you have our max boost, your limits, how many times they've been hit, your max RPM, your max GT. Uh, this is very useful if you're loaning the car out to friends. Uh, same with the boost histogram, so you can go to a certain boost level and see how long the car has been under boost there. In the lock options, you can choose a pin and have the ability to lock people out of certain features of the boost controller. For example, the limits so they can't be changed, uh, tuning the boost controller so the boost level can't be changed, and also statistics, so someone couldn't erase what they've done with the boost controller. Menu 8, Load, Save, LCD. Here you can set up the names of your four boost presets, your LCD control, and reset the unit. You can turn on or off which of the four presets are available to you. So in this example, you have three of the four available. You can change the name of each preset by holding down the center button, changing the name appropriately, and exiting that menu. When you fire up the car each time, you can choose how many uh, channels to display by default, one, two, four, or eight, and also which boost level will be set by default. So in this example, we'll have boost low. You exit the menu, and now each time you fire up the car, it's gonna start at boost low.